Right folks, uh, game two. Jake's with me again. Hello. And here we have Nightcrawler, top left of Cosmic Sapphire. And uh, Will in the bottom right. So, what are the hopes and dreams for Cosmic Sapphire? Cosmic Sapphire. I haven't actually played on this map. I will be completely honest. It At a glance, at a glance, how many maps bases per side? That's uh, about it, it's seven. It's big, Cosmic Sapphire. Looks pretty big to me, yeah. It is big. It doesn't have a lot of its empty, though. Right, okay. You know, if you look at the... Uh, it's not exactly packed with... So, so you can definitely uh, split the map in half pretty quickly. But there's yeah. huge emptiness in the middle. With all this, like, weird up and down action. Yeah. Mm, neat. That's cool. So, it's generally a ground army map. That makes sense. Yeah, I can see yeah, that. Yeah, it's not like loads of dead space, and and the open mm. is generally pretty open, so you can move around a big ground pond in army pretty well. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I like this. We've got an earlier expo from Nightcrawler. I don't like the forge opening. Um, mm. This isn't Wings of Liberty. <laughs> Back in the day, the first kind of iteration of StarCraft Two, Wings of Liberty. Um, Forge Fast Expand was really popular. So as a Protoss, you went Forge first, you went Forge Nexus Cannon, uh, just to kind of keep your Nexus alive against links or whatever might show up, any early kind of harass. Uh, and that was a really standard opener for Toss. Um, but then they introduced other ways for Protoss to be able to defend their home base. Uh, they introduced the Mothership Core, uh, which could do like overcharge on a Nexus so that it fired. Uh, then they changed that so that it could do overcharge on any pylon. But then that led to Protosses doing these weird cheeses where you build a pylon mm -hmm. on the other side of the map, <laughs> sent the mothership across, the mothership core across, and overcharged it. Um, so they, in the end, they got rid of it and they replaced it all with the adept. Um, so Protoss got adepts for seeing off early pressure, basically. And they, mm -hmm. they do it well. They're good against Lings, they're good against Reapers. That's. Uh, he sent this observer to scout for when the third timing comes down. That's that, that, that's 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 high level for this. This is great. I mean, yeah, I, I'm loving seeing observers in the mix um, because, as a general rule, we just don't see enough sky. Um, the position of this, I think I would have preferred it here. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but he'll still. He, he's got just the edge of those zealots, but you'd have to be paying close attention to see when they moved out. But he does know that this base is up and mining. He also knows there's no gas at that base as well. Just yeah, that's true. Important. That's true. So as it turns out, um, there's no detection here for Nightcrawler. So he could get a full fly through. Um, Protoss players, as a pro tip, pro tip time. Um, in terms of scouting, oh, look how many getaways this is. This is they're, just they're well really placed. two they're base well always, um, which I'm fine with. As a, as a means of scouting, if you build a sentry, sentries can produce hallucinations. A hallucinated phoenix is extremely fast, or a hallucinated oracle is quite good fun, because you'd be surprised at how often people, if they're on it, the hallucinated oracle comes in and they pull their workers, because <laughs> they think it's real, they think they're going to lose workers. Um, but those hallucinations time out, and they die very easily if they take shots. So Phoenix or an Oracle is fast enough that you can generally get a full fly through of your opponent's base. Now, this is, I mean, look, production is, there's no more workers in production for either side. Let's have a look at the army supply. Nightcrawler ahead just, but behind in worker supply. So, I mean, he's ahead, but it's mostly Zealot. These are a lot of Archons. And bear in mind, they will do splash damage. If those Archons are going to be mean, and if they come to a head-to-head -head here, even regardless of the of army supply being slightly in their favour, when when like when, like how many supplies an Archon? Like four? Yeah. When when like a, a good number? When like there's five of them? Quick maths. I'm math student. I can do this. When a twenty supply? There we go. That is Archon. <laughs> I... Welcome to that school. <laughs> I like I like. I do, I do like Will placement of the um, of the warp prism here. They're able to get reinforcements in very quickly. Okay, we're going to have a bit of a messy engage in this choke point, isn't it? 
that those zealots in the middle are taking a muller in. They've got zealots on one side of them, they've got archons doing splash. I think Will's just gonna crush through. Oh yeah, 100 percent A couple of those archons were are trying to find a trying to find a way to squeeze themselves in to get a couple of shots off there, but it looks like the three of them ha having full up time was enough. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean this I don't think fella. Come back on this. A lot of kills. These uh, zealots it's kind of I don't know if by good luck or or, or good management. Um, you know, Nightcrawler had Immortals, which do pack a barrel punch, but they're not great against Charge Lots. Um, charge Lots can take a bit of a batter in, and with the fast surround doing a lot of damage quickly, uh, they'll crunch through an, uh, an Immortal pretty quickly. Had he gone Stalker heavy, Immortals would have been perfect against it, but um, with the Charge Lots, Immortals not really the ideal unit there. Uh, would have been nice to have, well, I suppose, it would have been pretty early, I suppose, for Colossus, but uh, it looks like, it looks like these are the death throws. Pretty convincing yeah. from Will. Very convincing, but I must admit, I'm, I was much more in favour of Nightcrawler's build this game as opposed to the last game. It looked a lot more clean, a lot more yeah. straight up. There was some, there was some, uh, we had some discussion about the early forge, but otherwise, they built much more of a, much much more of an army that could definitely at least in terms of size compete with um wheels here which was nice to see yeah. um the composition is the main issue but it definitely looked like that game they had more they had a more of a chance it was nice yeah for sure i'm just uh i'm just looking at the mean the average apms here and you know that's not too shabby from either player yeah. given the nightcrawler i'm assuming is a brand new player Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 37 as a starting point isn't too bad at all, and 78 as a Protoss player is that's quite respectable, you know. I like what I'm seeing from these pair. Decent, but it is Will. Oh, look, I forgot to do the thing. I always forget to do the thing. It is Will that goes to GG. GG.